trigger happy and I give less than a fuck. Love me or hate me, I'ma show no rip shit up. It's Mr. Nothing, nice on a mic stand. Mike in the left and the zest in my right hand. I took a puff, had enough now, hold up. If that was in dope, niggas getting rolled up. Yo Good evening, folks. This is Astro. So I'm gonna review Pop Smoke's debut album. Shoot for the stars, aim for the moon. Now, the thing about this project is it actually did not make it in Pop Smoke's lifetime. Really, this guy, he was in drill music, which drill music is kind of a subgenre of rap. It's kind of a lot more thumping. To me, it kind of seems like a lot of pulsating vehicle music that typically deals with like tearing up the highway and more kind of venturous numbers more so than just kind of at the house. It seems a lot, it's Drill to me is definitely a social genre and a lot of times engaging and this, you know, like the title says, drill, which is kind of drilling and harsh and that type of stuff. And it's different from trap, which trap kind of can be in a vehicle. There's a lot of songs that kind of have that thumping bass and stuff, but to this degree, it just feels like this is a very, like, I'm not just at home playing like Xbox or something like that, but actually other things going on. And it's not, I, I mean, I respect the genre in the sense of what it was attempting to do, but I really, I really feel like Pop Smoke's death completely cut the head off the snake just because in a lot of ways he was the leader of that genre that was about to happen and he wasn't even able to put out one album before he passed. So really, he dropped like one mixtape or two mixtapes in his lifetime, one mixtape, he dropped two mixtapes in his lifetime. One mixtape came out just 10 or 12 days before he died. And then the other one, which only really had like one single, came out in the summer of 2019. So this guy had a pretty early career, and it just was completely abruptly halted right as it was getting started. Now, I feel like Drill itself... To talk about drill, I feel like drill itself is still a worthwhile subgenre, despite the fact that folks in like this woo group that uh, Pop Smoke had, it's still kind of festive in some senses. But I think the ideas that Pop Smoke would have had, especially in 2022, two and a half years later and beyond, because he was only 20 when he died we'll just probably never know. I mean, it's like imagining if Dr. Dre had died before making The Chronic. You know, that wouldn't have been very good if he would have died back in the NWA days. And that's basically what happened with Pot Smoke. He didn't even manage to put out one album. But 50 Cent uh, executive produced this project, and he did a pretty decent jo job with it, considering that he hasn't really executive produced projects in probably about 10 years since before that happened. Or something of that fashion I would just have to say it definitely is interesting in that sense to kind of see what 50 cent would have up to and just the fact that he understands drill a little bit considering that that wasn't his genre at all but I do kind of feel like this is kind of an underwhelming project just because the right momentum I just feel like there's so it's such a mysterious subgenre that there are a lot of people that just didn't understand what to do with pop smokes vision because when he died he didn't even have an album title, he didn't have a single, and he didn't have any supposed guests that were going to be on there. And then on top of that, his usual suspects that were part of his Boo group and other featured drill artists are nowhere to be found on this album. So there's no other drill artists, it's mostly just a bunch of trap artists who don't really understand Pop Smoke's vision. But it's not like they don't fit to that degree, but it's just kind of, it's like pairing you know, Tupac up with like Nelly or something. It's just something that's kind of, it just doesn't make a ton of sense. And, you know, maybe he has worked with some of these people, but it's kind of like a merging of two subgenres. And basically looking on Wikipedia, the thing about it is, is it says it's a mixture of three genres, which is drill, trap, and R&B. And the thing about drill is I do kind of feel like in some cases it can be a cousin of trap music. I just feel like Drill is kind of the more excited version of Trap, less auto-tune and more kind of thumping, kind of fierce moments, especially when it's executed correctly. But we'll go ahead and talk about the singles. Um, so the first single, really the first single was Dior, and that came out of one of his mixtapes. But I'm going to go ahead and say, to me that's one of the best songs. A lot of folks feel like that's Pop Smoke's signature song is Dior. 
pretty much reminds me, I mean, really my introduction to Pot Smoke was on the album Jack Boys by Travis Scott when he was on like that Bugatti or Gotti song, something like that. That was just a great song. That Just the energy, just the whirling energy of that song. That's very similar to the song that's on this album, the bonus track Dior. I feel like songs like Gotti and Dior are the kind of song that Pop Smoke needs to be on. And unfortunately, it's very underused on this album. It just would have been interesting to see if Pop Smoke had at least been able to work on this album a little bit more to kind of see the direction that he would have gone on. Because it just feels like, you know, the unfortunate thing two years later, seeing all the singles that have come out after come come out off of this project. It seems like the most popular songs from this album were just the R&B songs. Like For the Night is Pop Smoke's most popular song and with Da Baby and Lil Baby. And then What You Know About Love was a top uh, 10 single. And then Mood Swings hit like the top 20. All of which, and even The Woo was another one. All of these singles, The Woo, Mood Swings, and What You Know About Love are all R&B flavored, and they don't really have that drill. I don't consider those songs drill at all, which is too bad because we really didn't get to appreciate what drill would have been about. But we'll get to that. So Dior is definitely a great uh, bonus track and great single. I appreciate that song. Real kind of just thumping, feels like you're just speeding in, in a vehicle type moment just going out smoking that type stuff this great overall feel make it rain is another one like that that's the actual first single from this project and i definitely appreciate how that one went it's kind of like in the same variation of that yeah i just would have to say it's kind of within the same variation the problem with it is, is there's a lot of guests on here just because i don't know the degree if they just took if they just took like a particularly good pop smoke verse and then just pasted it on like another song that maybe didn't have to do with it. But there are some guests on here that it's just kind of, I don't know. Um, it's maybe not on this particular song, but there's songs where I wish that there would have been more pop smoke and less guests on here. But it's just kind of, it's more of like a compilation almost just because... You get attached to Pot Smoke and just his kind of thrilling and kind of manic and this really sullen voice and just has a lot of grisliness to it. And then you get some guest that sounds like some trap artist that's just kind of overusing the auto tune and it just is, eh. You know, that that's the problem I have with all the merging of the trap on here is we didn't get to really appreciate like what Pot Smoke was attempting to do just with his energy. It's the same thing with uh, with his song with Travis Scott. I mean, Pop Smoke completely annihilated that song, but, I mean, Travis Scott was okay on that song, but Pop Smoke stole the show on there. But yeah, so Make It Rain was a good, you know, like I said, pulsating kind of drill song. The Woo really switches it up. I originally thought that this was going to be like Dior and Gotti, but it wasn't. It's really kind of like Rockstar. It just has like these, you know, Mac Latino guitar type licks on there. Really kind of laid back seeming uh, at like some sort of, you know, so South America kind of mansion party, something like that. This real relaxed, no sort of up-tempo vibe about it whatsoever. 50 Cent is on here. And he does pretty good, but I wasn't too big a fan of Roddy Rich's verse. I mean, I just felt like the singing was a little bit too, like, noisy on there. But it, 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 it Pop Smoke was decent, but his verse could have been better too. I mean, I just felt like that's not the kind of song I felt like Pop Smoke needed to be on. I just think it's too early in his career to put out, like, a song like that that was... I mean, it was kind of breezy. I somewhat liked the production, but I feel like this early, it, it kind of seemed like, um, this early, it kind of seemed like it was not the kind of single he needed to put out. I mean, really, Drill was still very in its early stages, and it just seemed like, you know, trying to showcase, because it, this song, this Woo song is not even Drill. I mean, that's the thing. It's not trap either. It's just kind of like, well, it's, pro it's probably like a, a trap pop single, if you know what trap pop is, kind of like something Roddy Rich or like a Lil Baby or Dub Baby would do with songs like Rockstar and stuff. But, you know, I don't, I'm not too big a fan of trap pop just because most of the time they do not nail the production and this has a bunch of auto-tune and just blah kind of singing. 
and pot smoke has a decent hook on this song but it, it really is just kind of almost like an ugly mesh i still like the song but there's a lot of concoctions it's just kind of ugly chemistry i would have to say but the next song is mood swings and this is kind of an r&b song and this is another attempt this one's a little bit more sultry a little bit more romantic than what you know about love it's a little bit more intimate and i wasn't too big a fan of this one i just felt like once again this kind of carried the energy way too quickly it just kind of feels like he goes through the motions and you know doesn't have enough moments to really because i feel like you know pop smoke what he was attempting to be he had this huge subgenre that was created and he could have showcased and spearheaded the movement and created this and opened the doors for a bunch of people and we just get like a regular pop rap attempt at trying to cross over instead and that's kind of what happened with mood swings and the woo didn't really like mood swings this sort of stuff continues with for the night da baby and lil baby two really popular rappers around 2020 this is another one i do like the beat on here but it's not quite as engaging as I would like it to be. I mean, it just has, it's kind of surprising. Reminds me of like a nice mansion smoke session, not just like a backyard at some, you know, regular house, but like actually like a mansion smoking in like tuxedos or something like that. It's the fancier version of like a smoke song. I felt like Pot Smoke was gone too quickly on this song and Da Baby and Lil Baby did okay, but I would have liked at least Pot Smoke to have had a second verse. And then What You Know About Love was basically, this was a pretty solid R&B song. This is kind of like the numbers that 50 Cent used to pull off when he would go from doing songs like Many Men and In the Club and songs like that and Disco Inferno. And then he would switch it up with the song like 21 Questions. It was just pretty clever that this song was kind of able to come out of nowhere and be quite clever. I mean, a lot of people liked it. It's the most popular song that got streamed on Spotify from this album. Just overall solid R&B. I mean, once again, the direction is kind of nowhere near drill like I would have liked it to, but it does have a nice showcase of versatility just because the thing about Pop Smoke is just the fact that it seems like he had the, the gumption to at least be able to put out like crossover rap type stuff but it's unfortunate because he sacrifices pretty much over 70 percent of the time the subgenre that he made just instead to cross over and make some pop rap and kind of sell out a little bit now you wouldn't think with some songs that he has on here like gangsta's and 44 bulldog and those type songs and you know a many men tribute and got it on me that he's just going to cross over and do that. But that's kind of what happened where it's just like, you know, it chose to be more in like the glitzy lifestyle and kind of flash and flex a little bit more in like a pop sense more so than trying to iron out what he, his vision that he had pretty much just a six months before he died with the woo mixtape. And really none of his friends are on here. And I think that's kind of a, an, a, a minus kind of attribute is just being able to say, I don't know where they went and I don't know why there weren't songs to establish it. But there's just a lot of moments that have trap artists on here that don't really fit like the, 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 the idea of this project. Like Quavo's on here a bunch, but it, like I'll talk about like some of these. I'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and get into the score. So I wound up liking eight songs out of eighteen. One song is the intro. It's actually nineteen, but one song is the intro. And no, I'm not gonna do the deluxe edition right now. I might do the deluxe like months from now, something like that, because that's thirty-four songs and nineteen songs was a lot to digest as it was. So I'll probably do the deluxe down the road because that's an additional fifteen songs to review. So that would have been thirty-five songs I would have had to review, but yeah, so there's 18 songs on here. I'll go ahead and list the eight that I recommend. So Dior, Creature, Make It Rain, The Woo, Aim for the Moon, Tunnel Vision, For the Night, and What You Know About Love. So I'll talk about a few of these. I'll go ahead and score this album to me liking eight out of 18. I would pretty much say I'll, I'll give it like a five out of 10 just because I respect the effort of what was trying to go on here. And I kind of feel like it had a lot of a good consensus of what to do, but it just was, I mean, there's a number of hits on here, but it just is not what I would have expected it to be. And the crossover attempts happen way too much. Like I would have taken, there's like six R&B songs on here, kind of trap R&B type songs, trap pop on here, 
lots of them, probably more than six out of 18. So more than a third of the project is trying to cross over. And then there's like some thug moments like Gangsta and 44 Bulldog and uh, Got It On Me and that type stuff that this, I mean, showcase the fact that Pop Smoke is really not that good at album cuts just yet, especially when he's not doing his drill subgenre. And But I will list some of the songs I did appreciate that were not the singles. So uh, I felt like Aim for the Moon was another song similar to Dior and Gotti with Travis Scott, which is not, I talk about that song, but it's not actually on this album. It's just a good song by Pop Smoke. But Aim for the Moon was another drill type song that I would have loved hearing way more. And Creature is another one. I feel like him and Sway Lee had some good chemistry. It's just a nice, another kind of creeping and exhilarating song that just has an exhausting kind of vibe. And it's just a lot of fun to mess with. And um, then I would also say Tunnel Vision was a great outro. I mean, he did kind of do some drill on here, but it's just kind of peppered in. You have to really look for it. I feel like, I feel like Dior, Creature, Make It Rain tunnel vision and aim for the moon all have like that drill sound that just kind of i know they didn't want to overtly do it but it just is so surprising that in terms of the singles they didn't even attempt to do it and that's kind of the concept there they just tried it once and then we're like okay let's make some money off of this as if like they didn't trust that drill is going to be a sufficient subject but i'm also going to look real quick at like the charting appeal because i just want to prove just to be able to see you know the popularity yeah i mean make it rain which was a drill subgenre type song only hit 49 on the billboard 100 so this that was basically the single that did the worst out of the five or six on here so really every other one for the night uh the woo uh what's it called uh I forget these mood swings, what you know about love. All of these did better than Pop Smoke's, you know, s signature type stuff that he was trying to do. Which that's, it's just like people just completely ignored it. They just went to town or just like, oh, they just kind of shrugged like that. Just don't even care. <laughs> so I don't know. It's interesting because I just don't think enough people realize possibly like what Pop Smoke was attempting to do and these sorts of folks within his crew and the folks that were affiliated with him were going to do. I think some people just see it as like fancy trap. I don't even know if they know the difference, but this is kind of, it's a disappointing moment because it's so underappreciated and then people hear the singles and they don't like it. And it's like, well, that's because his usual style was not showcased. And it just wind, winds up being some trap pop with trap artists that's kind of has a hodgepodge result. And it's kind of a mixed bag as to how much it works. And this is kind of the thing about it, but yeah, regardless, I could go on with this for a long time. I did like the singles, despite the fact that it wasn't the vibe I wanted. And I can't really control the reception that this album got, especially the fact that it's two years later. But this suffice to say that Pop Smoke had some talent, and he is versatile enough to do these singles when it has the attempt in it. But this is kind of the concept that it this was, you know, the showcase of it and how it happened across the year 2020 on top of the COVID pandemic that happened was just not very, like, the finesse behind it was just not up to snuff. And even for 50 Cent Executive producing it, it just felt like, it just felt like the vision got kind of botched. And that's just kind of the situation. But I give the album a 5 out of 10. I give the album a 5 out of 10. The social score I'll give, like, a six out of ten is because i respect the fact that there were as many singles from it it's just the fact that i don't know if these would have been the ones that pop smoke wanted and what he was attempting to do and this kind of a mixture is kind of like i said this happens with tupac and biggie posthumous albums stuff like that pimp c maybe not as bad with pimp c but this you know when artists pass on and then they try to make posthumous albums this stuff kind of happens but especially the fact that pop smoke died before he was even able to put out one album that's kind of the situation even a single from the album so really this i don't even know if this album was like 15 percent done which is kind of the concept so it's really that 50 cent just did what he had to work with and gave people this like hey this is what could have been even though it might not have been it's just that's the closest thing we got because pop smoke deserves something so that's kind of the thing but so, uh, yeah, Social Score gets a six, and really the future, 
Like Pot Smoke dropped another album in 2021 called Faith, but that album, this album was actually a heralded album. This album won some accolades, but Faith, people said, was not nearly as good. And 50 Cent didn't executive produce that one, so it's just kind of like, eh, you know. But I just would wonder, I might eventually review that in addition to the deluxe on this album. But yeah, I just kind of feel like it's a little bit underwhelming, just right in between average and mediocre. But there is some promise on here, and Pop Smoke does have talent, so that's the thing there.